It's six o'clock on the nose as we take our first full look at today's top headlines. The mother of a nine year old girl found dead in a vehicle in the central part of the province has been charged with first degree murder. The body of Amber Lucius was found in a rural area near Sundry last week. Her mother, 47 year old Laura Coward, appeared in court Monday morning. She was found outside of the vehicle where the girl's body was discovered. But so far, RCMP are not saying how the little girl died. Homicide investigations involving children are the worst of crimes. Children are true innocents. Amber's father issued a statement yesterday saying that he is devastated by the tragic loss of his innocent, sweet and lovely daughter and is heartbroken by her death. A not guilty plea from Travis Vader. Vader appeared in court Monday facing nine charges tied to theft, weapons possession and drug trafficking. The trial is expected to last over five days. This case is unrelated to the first degree murder charges he had been facing in the disappearance of Lyle and Marie McCann. Those charges were stayed earlier this year, just a few weeks before the case was set to go to trial. An Edmonton Eskimo is apologizing for comments made during Saturday's game against the Stampeders. That bleep is cornerback Pat Watkins reacting to Stampeders quarterback Bo Levi Mitchell, a homophobic term caught on the live broadcast. Monday, Watkins shared his regret, saying that his comments were made in the heat of the moment. I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not, I don't hate gay people. I don't hate gay athletes or any of that. It's just bad choice of words. And, um, you know, I just want to put this behind me and move forward. With the way that culture and society is changing, and it's for the positive, um, you know, we need to be able to adapt as well on the football field. You know, we're role models, we know that. He had a poor choice of words, but I think he's learned from it. We've all learned from it where, you know, there's no place for that, that word in the game or, or off the field either. General Manager Ed Hervey says the organization does not condone that type of behavior and are handling the matter internally. No word yet if the CFL will take any action. Meanwhile, south of the border, it is a story that is sparking outrage from fellow football players, coaches, and fans. Ray Rice is no longer a Baltimore Raven, and a warning, the following video is disturbing. The team cut the running back on Monday after TMZ released this video showing him hitting his then fiance in an elevator at an Atlantic City casino in February. The NFL has also suspended Rice indefinitely. Both the league and the Ravens say that they had not seen the violent video until Monday. Rice had previously been suspended for two games for domestic abuse earlier this year. Meanwhile, CFL Commissioner Mark Cohan says the running back will not be allowed to come play north of the border. Alberta's new top politician may be looking outside to build his inner circle. Premier designate Jim Prentice admits that he's musing about appointing unelected officials to his cabinet. He's already said he would slash the current number of ministers by as much as a third from 30 to 20. Among the outsiders being considered, former Edmonton Mayor Stephen Mandel. The name is expected to be confirmed and released next Monday. I'm giving full consideration to, to all of the alternatives uh, in terms of having a, a cabinet that can deliver on the priorities that I spoke about during the course of the campaign. So you are thinking of naming people who are not elected to the cabinet? I'm giving full consideration to what a, what a cabinet would look like and who might be in it, and that will include uh, uh, all of the alternatives. On Sunday, Prentice announced that Mandel would be part of his leader's transition team. Prentice also adding he's considering a fall throne speech to formally lay out his government's vision. Well, just weeks after Justin Trudeau brought his Liberal team to our city, Thomas Mulcair is touching down in the capital region in a bid to win more seats here. The NDP will hold a caucus strategy session this week, which runs from Tuesday, runs Tuesday till Thursday. Mulcair will address the 97 MPs on Wednesday, joined by Alberta NDP leader Brian Mason. And then on Thursday, Mulcair will outline his party's plan to win more seats in the 2015 federal election. Edmonton Strathcona MP Linda Duncan currently holds the lone NDP seat in our province. Meanwhile, longtime federal MP Peter Goldring is calling it quits. The Edmonton East representative says he will not run in next year's general election. He was first elected under the Reform Party banner back in 1997. Goldring says he did consider running in either Edmonton Griesbau or the Edmonton Centre ridings, but decided that there was a more pressing priority. I think that I owe it to my family. And I think that after, it'll be 18 years, 18 and a half years, I think that that's a road 
uh, well ridden and well tread and it's time to step back from it. Bouldering made national headlines in recent years after being cleared of impaired driving charges and proposing Canada annex the Turks and Caicos. Well, she may be a Calgarian, but that doesn't mean there isn't plenty of love between Edmontonians and Jan Arden. Arden deftly intertwining her big musical hits with comedic bits in front of a packed crowd last night at the Jube. Of course, just one night prior to that, Arden co-hosted the Canadian Country Music Awards at Rexall Place. 